Hello, um, my name is Dr. Jennifer Gomez, and I research the impact of violence exposure and violence victimization on minority youth and young adults. And today I'll be talking with you all about my article that was currently published in Violence Against Women. It's called, Isn't It All About Victimization? Intercultural Pressure and Cultural Betrayal Trauma in Ethnic Minority College Women. But first, so a little background on me. Um, I earned my PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Oregon in 2017. I currently work at Wayne State University in the Merrill Palmer Skillman Institute for Child and Family Development, and I'm part of the postdoctoral to faculty transition program here at Wayne State. I'm also the co-editor for the 2015 special issue of Journal of Trauma and Dissociation, which was on self-injury and suicidality. Um, and I'm now the co-editor to an upcoming special issue of the same journal, Journal of Trauma and Dissociation. Um, this one's going to be about discrimination, violence, and healing in marginalized communities. And manuscript submissions um, are due fall 2019, um, so I'd love to read your work. Um, I got into work on violence against women with the goal of understanding how the broader context of inequality um, within society affects mental, physical, and behavioral health outcomes for minorities who experience violence. And to this end, um, for the greater part of a decade, I've been developing um, and testing cultural betrayal trauma theory. So the general idea of cultural betrayal trauma theory is that some minorities, in reaction to societal discrimination and oppression develop intercultural trust with each other. It's so like love, loyalty, responsibility, connection um, with other members of their minority group. With in-group violence, that is a violation of this intercultural trust. It's a cultural betrayal. And I propose that these cultural betrayal traumas, so these within-group traumas um, within minorities, uh, will be linked with a variety of outcomes from things like PTSD that we typically study um, when we talk about violence, um, as well as things that we typically don't study, like internalized prejudice. So a last important thing is that while intercultural trust may buffer against discrimination and therefore be protective, intercultural pressure, on the other hand, takes this within group loyalty to the extreme by pushing people who experience cultural betrayal trauma, so it's within group trauma, to keep problems in house um, and protect the perpetrator um, and the minority group first and foremost above protecting themselves. So in line with the literature on racial loyalty, intercultural pressure um, can perhaps make it difficult for those who experience violence to disclose and to get help um, from therapists, um, police, um, school officials, and so on. Now, for my work on cultural betrayal trauma theory, I've been fortunate enough to have been funded now two times um, by the Ford Foundation Fellowship Programs, which are administered by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. And my article in Violence Against Women, this isn't all about victimization, intercultural pressure, and cultural betrayal trauma in an ethnic minority college women, um, was partially funded by the Ford Foundation. So in this study, I focused on um, college women due to the increased risk for two things. One, violence and exposure, and two, the onset and continuation of mental health problems during this transition into adulthood. So a little bit under 200 um, female college students from a large uh, public, um, predominantly white university in the Pacific Northwest um, were included in the study. Um, these women were ethnically diverse with participants who were Asian, Black, Native American, um, American Indian, Pacific Islander, uh, Middle Eastern, um, and others. Now over half of these female college students, over half, indicated they had experienced some form of violence in their lifetime, with just under one-third having experienced sexual violence victimization, specifically. Now of the women who were victimized, 80%, so the vast majority, um, indicated they experienced at least one form of intercultural pressure, so such as their ethnic group playing a role by making it difficult to disclose the abuse, um, or the members of the ethnic group suggesting that women's victimization may affect the reputation of the ethnic group. 
So more results here now controlling for age, ethnicity, and interracial trauma, so between group trauma, within group trauma, intraracial trauma, it's cultural betrayal trauma, and intercultural pressure was associated with symptoms of PTSD and dissociation for these young women. Now in digging deeper, there was an indirect effect with intercultural pressure explaining why cultural betrayal trauma was linked with PTSD and dissociation. So to answer the question of the title of this paper, um, is it all about victimization? So the answer is no, um, and this falls right in line with the disclosure literature, um, that how people around you impact um, your ability to disclose and your mental health um, following disclosure. Now it also means um, specifically for minority young women transitioning into adulthood, that how their ethnic group thinks about and responds to victimization um, impacts their mental health. So research-wise, this study provides evidence for cultural betrayal trauma theory. Um, these findings further can be useful for practitioners. So intercultural pressure um, and culture betrayal trauma and all the context that that includes can be incorporated into therapies, individual therapies, um, feminist therapies like relational cultural therapy. At the group level, um, therapy groups um, devoted to specific ethnocultural groups um, like Latinas, um, Middle Easterners, as well as subcultures, um, cultures in their own right, um, like Chicanas, um, Therapy groups with those specific um, ethnicities can promote healing through intercultural trust while addressing the fears and realities that lead to intercultural pressure in the first place, um, things like targeted police brutality and deportation. And finally, for policymakers, so oftentimes we think of inequality, such as inequality in housing and healthcare, as somehow separate from people's actual lives in other domains. Um, but this research on cultural betrayal trauma theory um, suggests that inequality further affects people's experiences and outcomes of violence. So what that means then is that intercultural pressure, I propose, is a reaction to the very real threat um, provided by systemic oppression, things like mass incarceration. Therefore, creating policy change that addresses all of the instantiations of inequality, things like inequality in education, for example, can have trickle-down effects that benefits ethnic minority women and others who experience violence within a society that discriminates against them. So as I close, um, I would like to thank the Ford Foundation Fellowship Programs um, and Violence Against Women Journal for making this work um, both possible and shareable with you all. Um, and if you would like more information about cultural betrayal trauma theory, my latest projects, um, including the Cultural Betrayal Multidimensional Inventory, um, the upcoming special issue of Journal of Trauma and Dissociation um, on discrimination, violence, and healing in marginalized communities, um, or any other highlights of my work, um, I encourage you to visit my website, which is jmgomez.org. Um, so that's jmgomez.org. Thank you so much.